Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In this and the next few sections, we're going to be looking at reporting. And as you're probably aware, reporting in Microsoft Project changed very dramatically in Project 2013. So if you have experience of an earlier version of Microsoft Project or even Project 2010, whereby you're now pretty familiar with, for example, using the ribbon, the reporting in Project 2019 may come as a bit of a shock to you because it's so different from what was in the earlier versions. So the first thing I'm going to do in this section is to give you an overview of the main features of reporting in Project 2019. I'm not going to cover it at any length because I'm going to assume that you've used basic reporting before, but I am going to hopefully explain enough to make it straightforward for you to follow what comes in the next couple of sections where I'm going to be looking at customizing reports and creating your own reports using these new facilities. I'll then move on in subsequent sections to looking at how to target reports at specific reporting requirements and later still, we'll look at some visual reporting. So first of all, let's have an overview of reporting in 2019, the basics, if you like. Now, for the purposes of this section, we're going to use version 11 of the website project, and the reporting facilities are available on the Report tab. Now, to the extreme left of the Report tab, you have the Compare Projects facility. I'm going to look at that a little bit later on, but I want you to ignore that for the moment. And at the right hand end, we have visual reports, and I'm going to spend a whole section on visual reports later on as well. The main bulk of the reports are in this central section. And in fact, I want to start by looking at the dashboards, because if I click on the drop down underneath dashboards, you can see there are five dashboards. Burn down, cost overview, project overview, upcoming tasks, and work overview. Now, I don't want you to worry too much at this stage what each of those are for. Hopefully, you have used them before and you've got some familiarity with them. But I'm going to talk about most of them in a later section. The main thing to be aware of here, apart from the fact that you have that menu of reports, is if you click in the bottom where it says more reports, from there, you can get access to all of the available reports. So if you look at the categories here, we have custom, dashboards, resources, costs, in progress, getting started, new report, and recent. And this list corresponds to the menu items that we have up here in view reports. So if I cancel that and click on resources, and more reports. Again, I get that same reports dialog box. Now let's go to the leftmost command there, new report. From that, I can, as I'm sure you know, create a new report. I can start with a blank report. I can start with a chart, a table, or a comparison. And more on creating new reports later on. At the extreme right, I have recent, which lists the recently accessed reports and custom gives me access to any custom reports that I've already made. And then getting started gives me access to getting started information. And one of the getting started, the best practice analyzer, is in fact the first report that we're going to look at. So let's click best practice analyzer. Now, when I've done that, you'll see that I have a contextual tab appearing on the ribbon and it's the Report Tools Design tab. And this tab lets me change the overall design of this report. Now, let me just go back one step and tell you how this report came about. If you imagine a sort of blank sheet of paper, what the Best Practices Analyzer contains by default is five objects on that sheet of paper. There's a heading that says Best Practices Analyzer, Immediately underneath, there are two charts. They may not look like charts at the moment, but they are actually charts. And below those two charts, there are a couple of tables. If I wanted to change the overall design of this report, there are a number of ways that I can do that. And in a couple of sections from now, we're going to start to look in detail at how we can change a design, or in fact, start from scratch and create a whole new report. 
but let's just look at some of the main features on the Report Tools Design tab. First of all, if I wanted to change the overall theme here, I could click on the drop down and let's choose a different theme. So I'm going to try um, Ion. Now that's changed the theme, which of course includes color scheme, fonts, text sizes, etc. And apart from changing the theme, I can look individually at uh, colors and also fonts and effects. I could also very easily insert an additional chart, an additional table or an additional text box. And I'll tell you more about those as we go along. I can also insert images and also any geometric shapes. And there's a whole host of shapes that I could use in this gallery and I could very easily add those to my report. I then have a group on the report itself which includes manage. So I could rename this report and I could also hop into the organizer. And of course, reports are one of the types of elements that you can manage within the organizer. I also have the opportunity to copy a report and that gives me the option of pasting it into another document. And then I have the page setup group where I can do things like change the size of the report. And you'll see by default, it's A4, but I could change it to a different size if I wanted to. I can also change the orientation from landscape to portrait. I can set the margins and you can see here, I currently have custom margins set. And also if I select page breaks, it will show me the page breaks on the page. In this case, you can see that the report fits onto my single page of A4 landscape, which is why we can't see any page breaks. Now, in this case, I'm going to do quite a bit to this best practices analyzer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this version and then I can get rid of it later on without upsetting the original. So I'm going to click on manage and rename report, and I'm going to call it DA best practice analyzer and click on OK. And of course, if I now go into the report tab and click on custom, you can see that it's been renamed and it's the first option that we have in the list. Now, looking at my report, I can see here that the fonts are actually a little bit small. So let me change the theme again. So I'm going to go back to my design tab, select theme, and this time I'm going to choose office. Now that still looks a little bit small to me. So let's try a different one. Let's go for facet. And there we go. That's slightly bigger. So having looked at some general aspects of the design of this report, and in doing that, we've reviewed which elements are included. Let's look at some of those individual elements now, starting with the header. If I click inside the text best practices analyzer, I've actually got a text box here. And if you look up at the ribbon, you'll now see that I have a drawing tools format tab. And when I click on that, I can format this text box with the words best practices analyzer in it. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could change the shape fill. Now at the moment, the selected shape fill is the theme color. And currently that's telling me that it's no fill. So I could select anything here from the palette. So maybe I want to change it to gold accent three lighter, 80%. And again, because this is overlapping slightly, I might want to drag that text box in just to make that a little bit smaller, like so. I could also change the color of the text if I wanted to. So if I highlight the text, I have a text fill option and I can change that text to anything I like. So let's do that in a darker gold color. And don't forget also, when you're doing things like text, you have those contextual menus available as well. So if I was to right click, I have all of my options in my contextual menu, as well as my mini toolbar. So I'm going to jump down into paragraph and I'm going to say I want to set the alignment to centered and click on OK. And there we go.
So just bear that in mind. If you need to put a text box onto a report to explain something, you can go to the Report Tools Design tab and do Insert Text Box. Having drawn the text box, you can then format it in any of those ways. So that's text boxes. Let's look at a couple of other elements on this report. We're going to be looking at these in a lot more detail over the coming sections, but let's say look at this element here, which is actually a chart. Now, when I click on it, I get the chart tools contextual ribbons. And you see I have two sub ribbons, design and format. And I also get on the right a panel, a field list panel. And that field list panel not only lets me choose the fields that are shown in the chart, but it also lets me apply things like filters, groups, outline levels and sorts. Now, sort, filter, group and outline are all concepts that you should be pretty familiar with. And so basically what you can do is select the data that you want to show in this chart. So note the field list lets you choose between task data and resource data. So now I've clicked on resources, you can see that my chart has populated. And if I scroll down the select fields list, you can see there it's selected remaining work. So I could choose to select any of these fields to get them to display in the chart. And some of them are more successful than others. And of course, at any time I can go in and edit these individual elements using my chart tools sub ribbons. So for example, I could change the color of these bars if I wanted to. Now for the other chart on the right here, the unassigned work, exactly the same sort of principles apply. So you can select the data and you can work on design and formatting of the chart as well. Now in the lowest part of the report, we actually have a couple of tables. And if I click on the tables instead of charts, you'll see that I again get a contextual ribbon called Table Tools with two sub ribbons, Design and Layout, which allows me to control every element of the table. And again, on the right, I have a field list where I can choose task fields or resource fields. And again, currently, if I look down, I can see that I currently have scheduled duration selected, and that's what's displaying in my table. And once again, I have filter group by outline level and sort by at the bottom. So in the next couple of sections, we're going to do some work on creating and customizing reports using all of these facilities. And you should get to the point where you can produce highly customized and appropriate reports that will cover any of the requirements you have in Project 2019. But that's it for this section. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get a free Microsoft Project 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, go ahead and click right over there. And click right over there to watch all the videos in this Project 2019 Beginners Playlist.